In this video, we're going to solve another past paper question involving uh, differentiation. A very typical question. Um, you see them a lot on those past uh, exams. So the credit goes to Cambridge and you check my site explainingmaths.com and you'll find loads of free resources, including many similar questions about differentiation. So what's going on? It says a hollow circular cylinder open at one end is constructed of thin steel metal. Now let me already make a quick sketch of that. So we have um, a cylinder and it's open at the top. There we go. So that's a cylinder in case you didn't know. Yeah, so it's open. Let me just say open, otherwise I may forget. The total external surface area is 192 pi centimeters squared. So that's the total surface area. The cylinder has a radius of R and a height of H. Okay, so the height is H and it has a radius of R. There we go. Express H in terms of R and show that the volume V of the cylinder is given by that particular equation. Yeah, show that question. So this is, if you like, the answer key, and we have to show workings leading to that particular answer. Yeah, so I cannot yet use that. But before we look at the volume, there's something we have to do with the surface area because express H in terms of R. So the surface area of a cylinder is pi r squared times two, but in this case, we only have one pi r squared because it's open. So it's going to be surface area, where I'm gonna write that down. I'm gonna to try to squeeze it in over here. Surface area is pi r squared, yeah, not two of them, just one, plus two pi r, times the height, yeah, the circumference times the height. And check my website, explainingmaths.com, where I prove that formula to you, but that's a formula you need to know. They say that's 192 pi, so um, 192 pi equals pi r squared plus two pi r h, there we go. And we have to express h in terms of r, so now we have to make h the subject. Well, first of all, we can divide everything by pi, so let's get rid of the pi, that makes life a little bit easier. Um, and then we have, if I rearrange it, 192 uh, minus r squared equals two r h. And then we divide everything by two r, so h is going to be 192 minus r squared over 2r. And now we have to use that information, let me put a bit of a box around that, to show that that formula, that equation of the volume is true. Now how do you find the volume of a cylinder? Yeah, although it's not a prism, it behaves like a prism, eh? cross-sectional area times the height to find the volume of a prism. Uh, to find the yeah, volume of prism. So in this case for the cylinder, cross-sectional area, so V is pi r squared times the height. So that's the volume of the cylinder. Again, a formula you need to know. So that is pi r squared times, and the height we've just said is 192 minus r squared over 2r. There we go. And apparently if I expand this, uh, perhaps some rearranging, um, I should get something similar like this. And you can see it is already almost similar. So uh, what can I do? I mean, there are several ways to approach it. I probably would um, expand it and then uh, factorize it again. So let me just do that. Um, perhaps you do it differently, that's fine. So it's gonna be 192 pi r squared minus pi r to the power four over two r. And if you compare what we have here and what they have there, you see that they have the half out of the brackets and the pi. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna take the half out, so the two will leave the denominator. And I'm gonna take the pi out of the numerator. But before I do that, by the way, I see I have a common factor r. Eh? So let's take the r out because they don't have a fraction there. So that becomes a three and that becomes a one. And then I'm going to take the half out and the pi uh, of the denominator. And then inside those brackets, uh, you will have, so 192, so the pi is gone, r minus, and then the pi is gone, r to the power three. There you go, and they already told you that that is what you were going to get, but you had to show that. Okay, continue, and again, I don't have a lot of space, I'm trying to squeeze everything 
on this tiny tablet screen. Uh, see um, if I will be successful with that. Let's move on. Given that R can vary, yeah, so the radius can have different dimensions. Find the value of R for which V has a stationary value. Now what does stationary value mean? It means if you would graph it, you have a local minimum or maximum. It means that the stationary value, that the gradient, that the derivative is zero. So what are we going to do? We're going to find the derivative of V, yeah, and that equaling uh, that one to zero. So the derivative, uh, half pi, and inside those brackets, so 192R becomes 192 and r to the power of 3 minus 3 times r to the power 2. There we go. And that has to equal um, 0. So uh, if we multiply or divide both times by half pi, so 0 divided by half pi will stay is 0, and that then will equal 192 minus 3r squared. So uh, 3r squared equals 192. 192, I'm going to use my calculator for that just to be sure. Divided by 3, 64. Uh, that's what I expected, 64. So that's when r is 8. We'll have a stationary value. Find the value of r. Yeah, so one value, r equals 8. Fantastic. Find the stationary value. Um, and determine whether it's a minimum or a maximum. Okay, so this is just, if you like, the x coordinate. To find the actual value, they mean the y coordinate. So, what is the volume when r is 8? So, let's do that part first. So, v8, yeah, find the stationary value, is going to be a half pi 192 times 8 minus 8 to the power 3. Okay, and if you plug all of that in your calculator, and of sure, make sure uh, to do that properly, you're going to get 1608.495439, and that to three significant figures is uh, 1610 centimeters cube. There we go. So that is that stationary value when the radius is eight. And then the final question is, we had to determine whether it's a maximum or a minimum. Now, where do I have space to do that? I'm just going to do that very tiny here in, uh, in the bottom box. Um, how can you determine whether a, a stationary point is a minimum or a maximum? You have to look at the second derivative. So the second derivative is going to be, uh, where's the first derivative? Where did I write it down? That's over here. So a half pi minus 6r. Yeah? So the second derivative is half pi times... Uh, minus 6r, there we go. And then we evaluate the second derivative for that particular point, r is 8, and then we all are only interested in the sign. What is it going to be, positive or negative? Well, minus 6 times 8, minus 48 times whatever this is, it is going to be negative, so smaller than zero. And when your second derivative for that particular point is negative, you have a maximum. That's going to be the nature. If it would be positive, the nature of your stationary point is a minimum. I hope that was useful. Um, I do apologize, it looks, um, uh, not very structured. That's just because my screen is so small and I want to do all of those questions for you. Check my website explainingmaths.com. You'll find loads of other free resources. Like and share if it was useful. Uh, I appreciate it. Take care. Bye-bye.